Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, today, we're discussing Chef Cloud Security Posture Management and how you can handle CSPM at scale with Chef. Uh, my name is Kamirat. I'm part of the product marketing team here at Progress Chef. And with me is Jacob George. He's the product manager. Hello. Right, so so uh, before we go ahead, uh, I'll just run through the agenda for today. Uh, we're discussing CSPM, what exactly is CSPM and why do we need it? We'll also explain uh, how one of our customers uses uh, Chef, leverages Chef for uh, CSPM at scale. And then we also give you a brief overview of the Chef cloud security product and what exactly we offer. So to begin, let's just uh, take a step back and try to understand what CSPM is, right? We've heard, all heard of it. Uh, so what is CSPM and uh, why do we need it? The, so as we all know, cloud adoption has only increased over the years and cloud security posture management or CSPM has become a significant challenge for most organizations. IT teams are constantly monitoring their cloud resources, you know, trying to figure out if there are any misconfigurations and trying to remediate these misconfigurations. Now, these processes are repetitive and time consuming, and this has a big impact on their productivity and efficiency. Uh, they are spending a lot of time trying to fix these security risks and uh, configuration issues rather than focusing on development and the tasks that they've been assigned. Uh, so that is the basic uh, understanding of CSPM. But what is it exactly? What is involved? Jacob, would you like to explain? Sure. So CSPM is normally a category of security tools and technologies. They enable users to actually identify and remediate risks and misconfigurations in the cloud environment. So if you try to look at it overall, there are major aspects to CSPM. You can see them listed below. You have continuous compliance, policy-based definitions, risk identification and remediation. So what is continuous compliance? Like you always need to make sure if you're in your cloud infrastructure, that it's actually being compliant to your certain standards, like whatever policies that you have defined, if you have any regulatory standards that you're uh, matching or you have internal policies, you need them to be compliant with those. And you need to have that in a continuous motion, like regular, uh, regular or periodic scans or even uh, real-time scanning of your entire cloud infrastructure. Policy-based definitions uh, goes into the same aspect which I was explaining before. You need benchmarks against which you are actually going to be testing your uh, cloud infrastructure. And when you are running these audits on top of your cloud infrastructure, you can actually identify the risks also, which comes to the third major aspect. You can understand where your security risks and configuration issues lie within your cloud infrastructure. Once you have identified them, of course, the next step is uh, fixing those issues, right? So remediation is also a major aspect of uh, CSPM. The four different four major aspects as I listed before, they actually incorporate whatever technology that you would see in the CSPM space. And that is how uh, predominantly, like whatever Cam mentioned before, that's how we are trying to, that's how the market essentially is trying to address the issue. Right. Right. So as we discussed, right, so organizations are moving to the cloud. And as you can see from this slide, uh, more than 76% are utilizing two or more cloud providers, and even more are pursuing hybrid or multi-cloud strategy for uh, mainly scalability and business continuity. Now, this is beneficial for organizations, but it increases complexity, especially in managing multiple environments. So the reason why we have this uh, complexity is the rising use of uh, the migration towards cloud. Right. Now, what this has done is it has brought in a change in terms of security threats and the tools that uh, that are currently available uh, for these organizations to use. Now, what are these threat threats? Uh, Jacob will just give you an explanation around that. Yeah, so like Cam mentioned, uh, the entire scenario has changed, right? How people are actually using cloud. Cloud adoption has become really high, like you can see many people like 76 percent of the organizations use two or more cloud service providers everybody has a multi-cloud approach or a hybrid cloud approach looking at all these aspects it's really expected that the kind of security 
threats that you would face would be highly different since everybody is on the cloud. And I think this from the IC Square report where majority of the cybersecurity professionals have identified misconfiguration as being one of the major um, uh, being one of the major security threats which are there. Uh, uh, of course, we also have uh, insecure interfaces, exfiltration of uh, sensitive data. Now, these all have been identified, but how do you actually uh, fix these? So 78%, like, in, like you can see the graphic on the right side, 78% of cybersecurity professionals have admitted that whatever traditionally uh, traditional security solutions and tooling that they actually had, it doesn't work for your cloud infrastructure. Like it's either limited or it's completely not viable in that particular area. Yep, so these threats, how does CSPM address these threats? So what are the key benefits that CSPM offers that helps you address these threats? The four main benefits are visibility, evidence, reporting and alerting, automation. These are the benefits of CSPM. Now, in terms of visibility, what does it offer, right? It gives you a centralized dashboard uh, that gives you a comprehensive view of your infrastructure, security posture, and also gives you actionable metrics. Uh, when it comes to evidence, what it does is it allows you to compare regulatory standards and your existing uh, security frameworks uh, and find out the uh, delta between these to understand, you know, to gather evidence of misconfigurations or security risks that are there in your strategy, in your security posture strategy. Uh, moving on, reporting and alerting. So CSPM also gives you audit reports. Now you can use these uh, cloud risk reports to understand where you are in terms of your posture management. And it also allows you to trigger alerts or notifications every time a risk or a misconfiguration has been identified. Uh, CSPM, another major advantage of CSPM is it allows automation. What it does is it reduces the time that your teams need to spend auditing, scanning, remediating uh, by helping you automate the entire process of ident identifying configurations. Now, before we move on, uh, we'll just understand how, uh, you know, Chef, how uh, leveraging Chef helps you uh, handle CSPM at scale. We are going to discuss one of the uh, customer stories. It's a very interesting one. It's a SAP customer story. Jacob will uh, take over. Sure. So uh, this was a very interesting customer story, how uh, SAP was able to use uh, Chef to actually address their CSPM need essentially. So before we actually go into the depths of uh, how Chef was actually used, uh, how they actually got it implemented inside the DevOps pipeline, maybe a little bit of background as to um, why SAP had these, uh, what kind of challenges SAP faced and what kind of growth SAP had in terms of cloud adoption, maybe giving you an idea about what it uh, essentially looked like. That would be a really good base to start from. So SAP overall, they almost doubled their cloud adoption over a duration of three years up to 2021, I think are the numbers that we have. And like you can see, um, the cloud infrastructure or that SAP used had 9,500 active cloud accounts and over 11 million resources. And these resources are, uh, and uh, these cloud accounts and cloud resources, they were not spread across one cloud service provider. They were across AWS, Azure, GCP, and Ali Cloud, which kind of like validates what we are talking about talking about before, what Cam was talking about before, right? That uh, people are adopting the multi-cloud approach. They are using uh, more than one um, cloud provider. So along with this, there were certain challenges that SAP faced as well. Um, so SAP is a really huge organization. There are a bunch of different development teams doing a bunch of different things, addressing different uh, uh, business use cases, building different kinds of applications. And it's expected that they will not have a standard there, but they actually needed a solution where they would have uh, a security solution that will be, um, what do you say, will be able to uh, address the diversity in their development pipelines, right? So one of the major challenges that they faced was a variety of development tooling and pipelines. They had different teams doing different things across different areas, storing their data here and there on different cloud service providers, different requirements completely. 
Apart from that, they also had an issue with managing security except, uh, uh, exceptions. What that essentially means is certain development teams need access to certain areas which may not uh, essentially work with the internal policies, but they need to provide an exception for it. I think when SAP actually um, uh, did this integration with Chef, they had around 900 exceptions across their entire organization, and they had to check for those as well, uh, which adds to the complex cloud complexity apart from being uh, uh, so high scale. A different kind of challenge that they faced was the accuracy of misconfiguration alerts. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has faced this, but uh, it might be organization specific. Um, but SAP had a lot of false positives in terms of misconfigurations, like whatever was being identified as a misconfiguration wasn't really a misconfiguration. And the teams which were looking at these misconfigurations started to deprioritize it, not knowing whether it's an actual misconfiguration, whether it's a false alert. So even the accuracy of misconfiguration alerts become a, became a key concern uh, where SAP was coming from. Right, before we move on, just a quick poll. Uh, the audience will see a bunch of uh, questions pop up right about now. Uh, please pick uh, the options. We just want to understand the cloud providers that you're currently using, or you can choose as many options as you want. Uh, while that is going on, I think uh, Raj Kumar had a question. Uh, can you please share the sample reports? Uh, secure AWS and Azure and uh, GCP. I'm I'm not sure about the context, uh, Raj. If you could give a little bit more context to it, are you asking about um, uh, in terms of how many misconfigurations we were able to identify, how we were able to keep it uh, uh, able to keep the security posture up to date? Are you looking for that kind of data? I would, I would assume that it would be along those lines. So um, cloud security posture management is uh, more of an ongoing exercise, like in a sense that uh, you need to, the development environment keeps changing, the configurations keep changing because of development needs. And because of that, um, that there can be, uh, you just need to ensure that most of the nodes are actually compliant. If you are asking for um, scenarios in terms of, uh, metrics in terms of how long does it take to actually scan? Are we able to scan across these uh, different cloud service uh, providers and how long it's taking? I'm coming to that. that. That'll be the next area, like how SAP actually used Chef. They had two very innovative ways of actually doing it. And I will go deeper into those areas, maybe providing uh, numbers, um, uh, which I can verbally say. I uh, We can see if we have any report addressing those areas. I think we do have a white paper on this, which would be a really good reference point for you as well. Right. Uh, I think Raj has one more question. I think I'll just address that before yeah, we uh, before we actually move on, right? Yeah, go so ahead. How, how does it help application security and cloud security? So um, what you need to understand with cloud security posture management, you're essentially looking at misconfigurations within your uh, environment, right? So let's consider the fact that your cloud accounts, you want to deploy a ton of them, like how SAP had. They have now 9,500 cloud accounts. They need to get one more cloud account up and running. How do you ensure that it has not been misconfigured, that the configuration is perfect? What you can actually do is whenever you are putting up a new cloud account, you might have infrastructure as code. At that point, uh, uh, Chef Cloud Security will be able to check the entire uh, cloud account that you have actually put up, scan it regularly to make sure that it's being compliant. If it is not being compliant, the control will kind of like be pointed out to you, okay, you need to fix this particular area, which we'll come to deeper on uh, as um, as we move on uh, through the webinar, I think you'll get a deeper understanding of how that actually works. And Raj, feel free uh, whenever you have questions. Cool, Kam, you can, you yeah, can take it over yeah. now. So, yeah, so now we move on to, you know, how exactly SAP uses Chef. Uh, for CSPM and how they manage to uh, use it at scale. Yeah, so um, looking at this particular diagram, I know at one shot, it might be a little bit more complicated, but I will tell you to look at the two different sections in different colors. You have DevSec and Ops. The operations area is on the right side and the DevSec is on the left. What I will try and explain in the beginning would be mainly towards the operations area. Uh, and how uh, Chef Cloud Security was implemented over there. And we'll later move on to the DevSec area. 
So essentially what, what was done, uh, Chef has an internal tool called Inspec. Inspec is an open source framework. Essentially what you can do is you can write the desired state of what your cloud infrastructure is supposed to look like. It's really easy to write the code, easy to write policies inside that particular area. And you can actually compare it. It actually runs on top of your existing cloud infrastructure and gives you a report. Like where is it that the violations are actually happening? And that reporting can be something that is sent across to any kind, any different kind of system. So how was uh, progress chef uh, put into this particular area so inspect was essentially containerized it was run as a private kubernetes cluster with three nodes and sap ran a test uh, a test across their entire landscape whether they would actually be able to do the scanning i think this this is where the numbers come up right so um, the entire landscape at that point when they were running the test i think was around 8 million resources and they were able to complete the tests uh, in 3 hours and get a, a status of the security posture of their entire cloud infrastructure uh, in that amount of time i think in the private kubernetes cluster they had to um, i think around 280 containers is uh, what it ran up till but normally sap uses around 150 containers for its regular running but the key point over here is since they were able to containerize this whenever their uh, requirements are becoming higher like as we can see the cloud adoption keeps on increasing all the time right so when it is increasing they can actually increase the scale of uh, chef cloud security also because it is containerized use more containers and make sure the security posture is up to date one more thing that i will point out here is whatever reports that were coming out of uh, the inspect tool which was containerized they those were connected with your sex, uh, security incident and event uh, events management systems where they would actually get alerts as to wherever the misconfigurations have been identified so that that was kind of like uh, the main area where uh, Chef played in terms of the operational side of things. Right, and I also see that uh, we all, you know, uh, we use Inspec on Docker uh, in the dev side. Yeah, on the dev side. So this this is pretty interesting because it's more of a shift left solution, right? Even before your code is actually going on top of your infrastructure, uh, the same containerized Inspec was actually put on top of Docker and integrated into the development, the testing and the deployment pipeline to make sure that there are no misconfigurations even before it hit your cloud infrastructure. So that was that was a very innovative way of looking at this particular solution. And it's uh, really amazing uh, what they were able to achieve with cloud security uh, in terms of a shift left solution also. Right. So when we look at the, uh, all right, before we move on, we'll just do another quick poll. Right, and uh, this time we just want to understand the kind of containers that you have running on your infrastructure. Uh, please take a minute to uh, choose the options. Uh, so Raj had a question in terms of, I think, does it support both OSs, Linux and Windows? Yes, uh, we do have uh, content. We do have resources for uh, Chef Inspect, which address your host OSs like Linux and Windows. Uh, can you use it for microservices and cloud native service? Yes, you can. And use cases .NET PHP hosted on top of cloud. So that might be a slightly different area. I, I'm guessing what you're looking at will mainly be pointing towards the vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities is would be a different kind of solution. Cloud security posture management essentially looks at misconfigurations overall. I, I hope that answered that question. Okay, so continuing with the uh, customer story. So in terms of, uh, you know, why exactly did uh, SAP? So we understood how they leveraged uh, Chef for CSVM. Now, why, what was it and why is it that they needed uh, Chef CSVM? Yeah, so there are a bunch of tools inside the market, right? It's not that uh, Chef is the only one which actually provides this kind of solution. But the reason why Chef was adopted by SAP was because of its nature of being customizable. Like Inspec has a policy as code approach where you can actually change your um, policies with uh, really easy, uh, like 
really easy code. And uh, because, like I mentioned before, the challenges that they faced were in terms of diversity. They are addressing very, uh, many different um, different kinds of use cases, different developers using different kinds of toolkits all across the place, different internal policies. They have different customers in different industries, different regulatory standards that they need to adhere to. So when you are actually having to change so much you want a consistent base but you want policies to be changeable also as per each and every use case so like it's mentioned by jay thondon van Velzen, who is the head of security operations for sap multi-cloud the reason why they adopted it was because of the policy as code approach for chef and because it was very very easily customizable to fit each and every one of their use case which was a key differentiator with other cspm tools on the market right So now moving on. So let's see what uh, what exactly is Chef Cloud Security and the uh, CSPM solution that uh, we offer. Right. So what what we have already seen from the customer story, I, I'm. I'm thinking that we have already addressed majority of the key aspects. So if you guys were listening in before, we had those key aspects of, uh, we had visibility, we had uh, evidence, we had reporting and alerts, and we had automation, right? So with the SAP story, you know that we provide evidence. We know that reporting and alerts were something that were provided. And you know about the automation bit also and the scale that it can actually achieve. So th those were essentially clear. Now, what we provide with Chef Cloud Security is continuous cloud compliance at multiple multi-dimensional scale with unified visibility. I know it's a bunch of complicated words, but we can actually be, uh, I will address each and, e each and every one of these and I will try and explain how we actually do it. So continuous cloud compliance, as, as I explained before, it's something to do with uh, continuously auditing your cloud environments, trying to understand whether misconfigurations are in those areas. And that is something that you can do with Chef Cloud Security. You can schedule scans uh, over and over again and make sure that your cloud infrastructure is uh, compliant. You also have compliance standard compliance policies that you can refer to like your CIS benchmarks and so on, which will come on later at the scale part as well. You will also be able to detect misconfigurations and you'll also be guided as to where exactly that misconfiguration happened, right? Uh, when you're addressing the multi-dimensional scale, we spoke about one aspect of scale, which is going to be your, uh, we can address thousands of cloud accounts. We can address millions of cloud resources. But what's the other kind of scale? you will have a bunch of different regulatory or standards that you need to comply with. We actually do have uh, benchmarks, which can actually be used for um, for uh, doing uh, for running your scans. That is like your CIS, your SOC2, your PCI DSS, which is an industry specific benchmark for payments. Uh, you can also integrate with any cloud or uh, containers like we have resource packs, which are addressing AWS, GCP, uh, Azure, and we do have it for Kubernetes and Docker as well. So you can scan any environment that is there and we make sure that we are always keeping up to date with the latest benchmarks and we continuously release new and new content. So. Uh, keep a keen eye on our release notes as well um, now the now the address the last part the unified visibility right which cam cam spoke about like how do you see your entire posture at one go for your entire cloud that is something that uh, even though we had reporting on all the other aspects we wanted to create an interface as well an intuitive interface where you would be able to see your entire compliance posture at one go and uh, that is what we have tried to address we do have a intuitive ui now for chef cloud security and you can where you can actually actually see um, like whether your cloud accounts, your resources are actually up to date against the standards which are there. We will be providing uh, reports as well for uh, which address the same thing. Like you're running audit scans, you want to see the reports as to what is it, what is exactly happening inside your cloud infrastructure. And you can also export this uh, data into third party tools like uh, ServiceNow and Splunk, where you can, where other teams can take remediative actions. Like uh, essentially you find a misconfiguration within a particular uh, cloud infrastructure, you'll be able to say, okay, this is a misconfiguration. It'll alert it in that uh, in uh, Snow or Splunk and you'll be able to take remediative action beyond or the appropriate team would be able to take remediative action beyond that point. Right, so yeah, so that's what we mean by continuous cloud compliance at multi-dimensional scale with uh, unified visibility, right? That is in a nutshell what uh, Chef Cloud Security is, right? Um, yeah, we just have a, a brief overview of our uh, UI as well. Everything, yeah. yeah. 
uh, uh, Jacob just uh, explained uh, the different uh, uh, features. Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, we do have this new intuitive UI. We are addressing the visibility part of uh, your security posture within the cloud. So you're looking at uh, all the different uh, integrations, all your different cloud accounts, all your different uh, nodes, which are going to be there. You can actually see the compliance posture of those areas. That is the central screen that you see. On the left bottom side, what you can see is the audit reports. So if you go and check for each and every um, a node, which is essentially a cloud account, a resource, you can go and check uh, what the compliance posture was, what was the last audit scan, which controls were failing, and take remediative actions as well. On the top left, you can also see we have integrations with all the major cloud service providers. We can actually integrate EC2 instances also, and we have all that uh, jam-packed into an intuitive UI. Uh, we do have references where you can actually um, uh, check them out, like what the UI looks like, what the user experience is like, and uh, that'll be something great that we'll be providing. Yeah, before uh, we move on to the Q&A, uh, one last uh, poll for the audience. Uh, please go ahead and uh, let us know if uh, you would like to try out Chef CSPM. Right, so we also have uh, a few more questions, Jacob. Uh, would you like to address these? I think Raj has a couple more questions. Okay. Um, so I think I addressed a couple of them, uh, like in terms of can you use it for microservices, uh, .NET and PHP hosted on cloud. That's mainly around the vulnerabilities area, which is a different kind of security. Uh, I would say it's mainly towards the vulnerabilities. Uh, support IoT devices, yes. Um, as long as they're on the cloud, right? We are talking about cloud uh, posture management. We do have compliance also as a different product uh, within Chef. And if you are looking at on-prem devices, I would, uh, you can definitely look at Chef to provide solutions in those areas as well, right? Um, I think uh, uh, James Bray also had a question. Did SAP deploy their own instances of Chef Automate or did they leverage the AWS service you provided or was there another hybrid approach that they used? So uh, we did not, uh, uh, they did not leverage the AWS service. Uh, what they essentially used was a tool internal within Chef called as Inspec and they ran it on their own containers. So they provided the infrastructure even for running, um, uh, even for running uh, Chef Inspec. And uh, did they have their own instances of Chef and Automate? They did not use Automate. Uh, so what, what you can consider uh, that particular SAP story was mainly around the fact that they used uh, Inspec and we have built the intuitive UI on top of uh, Automate. I hope that answers your question. Was there anything? They did not uh, take a hybrid approach is what uh, I can answer at that point. There's one more. Uh, if SAP is using uh, uh, the cloud service, then an estimate on the amount of ingress at this data costs. Uh, the direct connectors, yeah. yeah. So uh, SAP is not using our cloud service. So they have it as an air-capped environment on top of their area. They are not using our cloud service. So I will not be able to estimate the amount of ingress egress data costs which are associated. I hope that answers the question. Right. Just uh, wait for a couple more minutes and see if you have any more questions. Sure. Do you want to take a look at the poll results? Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah. Just one second. I'm just trying to bring that up. Okay. What cloud service providers are you using? I, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, but I'm, I'm really surprised that a majority of the users are actually using Azure and compared That's to right. AWS, right? Uh, but uh, just to let everybody know, we do have support for AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, so, and AliCloud was also used. We, uh, we continuously keep on updating the co uh, content for the resource packs as well as the profiles in those area. So they're ready to use. Uh, just to address that point, but it is it is very fascinating that uh, majority of the users 
are on Azure now. That might be a changing trend for all we know. Right. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, Container-based technologies, I think, is a lot more. Uh, it's it's kind of different. Like, uh, yeah, majority of the users are going to be Kubernetes, right? Surprisingly, many people are still on Docker. Uh, OpenShift Rancher, uh, that's good to know. EK Service and GKE, but I think everything overwhelms uh, Kubernetes as well. I think it wasn't mentioned properly in the poll. Pro possibly it was uh, self-managed Kubernetes, what we are looking at. But I think this paints a really good picture, uh, which will be something that we can address when we go into the future. Like we do have Kubernetes security posture management as well uh, as part of the same solution where we do have content for Kubernetes and Docker, which I think is a predominantly most used apart from uh, EKS, which is Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service. And we do have support for all these different areas also. There'll be a different webinar on this on this particular topic, like Kubernetes security posture management, which will be coming into the future, I'm guessing, uh, possibly sometime early next year, would be something that we can address. And we have a lot of fun developments which are coming up in this area as well. Right. Uh, so I think we have time for a couple more questions, right? Um... Just a second. So, uh, does Chef support uh, Kubernetes uh, security posture management? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that essentially addresses what what I was talking about, uh, about before, right? Uh, Kubernetes security posture management. It's it's a new term. It's very similar to cloud security posture management. Only you're looking at containers and misconfigurations in those areas. Looking at master nodes and your worker nodes being configured the right way and ensuring that they are continuously compliant. So that is something that we have as of now, uh, and it's something that we will definitely demonstrate maybe in a future session, which you guys obviously uh, I hope will join as well, and we can give you further insight into it. Like I mentioned, a lot of new developments in those areas, like how it was pointed out in the poll that a majority of the people, um, majority of you guys are actually using Kubernetes, Docker, as well as EKS, which kind of like tells us where the need actually lies. And we do have support for all three as well. So uh, that uh, KSPM is something, yeah, we do, uh, we do support and we will be providing more information on the same in the future. All right, there's uh, one more question. This is around zero trust. Uh, can we implement uh, zero trust using the uh, chef? Um, so uh, that's, that's a very uh, different question in a sense that um, zero trust is, is much more of a strategy. Um, so essentially for, for a, maybe a layman's explanation in terms of uh, what zero trust is, you would actually consider uh, bad actors to be inside your perimeter. So normally the way organizations secure uh, your cloud infrastructure is by building a perimeter and uh, picking up security processes and tooling for things that are outside your perimeter. Whereas zero trust actually is a strategy in which you assume that everything is bad. You can have bad actors within uh, your uh, security perimeter as well. So completely removing the security perimeter, right? Um, obviously the way that you would try to adopt those strategies would be by having uh, a lot of policies like every organization is different your workforce might be working differently your customers uh, might be interacting with your data or your cloud infrastructure in a very different way so we would actually have to build um, you'll actually have to build policies uh, very specifically uh, that is something that each organization will have to do but to get something like that implemented um, uh, to ensure zero trust within your organization, that implementation stage is where Chef Cloud Security can come in. Uh, just to caveat this, I, do, I don't think there is, you cannot say that a technology or a tool would actually implement uh, zero trust uh, security. It's much more of a, uh, a different way that you would approach it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, and just one more question. Uh, can we use uh, Chef CSPM with Inspect? To inspect. Um, I think so, we addressed that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So inspect essentially. I'm I'm guessing that the question is around the fact that can we use a CLI? We need not necessarily go through the UI. 
uh, yeah, you can you can definitely do that. You can have visibility into your entire posture. And if uh, your practitioners, uh, if you are a practitioner who is at the lower level, you want to do it through a CLI, you want to write your policy as code and run scans there. And that way we can definitely use inspect or uh, inspect in to for your CSPM needs. Yeah. Right. And uh, I think those are all the questions we have, uh, Jacob. Um, yeah. Great. So, all right, then, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining the webinar. Thanks for the great questions. Uh, hope this was insightful for most of you to understand Chef and the uh, Chef Cloud Security product. Uh, do visit the website uh, if you need a demo or for more resources, uh, you can visit chef.io. Thank you.